I can remember anything about running a meeting <laughs> at this point. It's been so long. Um, so we'll like do... riding a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my favorite things to do. Um, so uh, we'll just do a roll call. Sue Polidora. Here. Ava Boyce. Here. Dee Dee Forte. Here. Susan Sturry. Here. Celeste Brooks. Present. And we also have um, Corin Hollowell from Trees and Greeneries, um, who's our li liaison, and Cynthia Ravel, right? That's correct. Yeah, I'm doing okay for our weather, uh, doing our minutes for us. Uh, we do have a quorum, so if everyone has read the minutes and sees anything in there that needs to be changed. Cynthia, yes. are you taking notes? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. And I'm horrible with Zoom, so I'm glad you spoke up. So if you want to say anything, just go ahead and interrupt. <laughs> interrupt, because I really am. I forget. You can ask Celeste. She's been on Zoom for a few times. So thank you, Peter. And spe uh, well, Pe Peter Splain, well, our new member. Go ahead. Well, I, I apologize for not being there in person, but we finally have a nice day at camp, and I didn't want to come home. I, I, we all know us blame you. Fair we understand. We all know that. We have lots of people at various times that come through Zoom, so we we yeah. still have a quorum here, so that that's good. So great. All right, great. sorry, Peter. Remember, call out to me. <laughs> so, all right. Um, anybody um, have any changes for the? minutes or see anything. I read them online and they seemed fine to me. No, they seem fine to me. So anyway, anybody want to make a motion? Motion that we accept the minutes. Seconded. Second. Okay, so let's go to... All in favor. Oh, all in favor, sorry. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Hi. I, I love the group effort <laughs> supporting <laughs> me. No union meetings. So. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we're not, well, Eva and um, Dee, I'm going to skip you so we can get um, Corin out of here. What time did you get home last night from the fireworks? Well, I didn't really go home. I actually just slept on the floor of my office. I got oh in about gosh. 1 a.m. and I live in Epsom, so got a few hours of sleep and got up at about 6 and went back out and started cleaning up again. But Oh, my God. I hate to be rude. I'm on call. I, got a, a, I just need to check this voice and make sure it wasn't central dispatch. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, anyway, sorry, I'm good. It wasn't them. So. Okay. Um, did you, so why don't we skip down to, did Susan, or what was, what so did She just gave me some talking okay. points. Yeah, I don't know if we just want to kind of skip you, all over. Yeah. Some of it's new business, I think. So the first uh, issue was the um, talking a little bit about their reinterment of the remains. And so that she wanted you to talk about that here. Well, just to mention that um, we need to get some measurements for uh, right. rough dimensions of the stone. Right. I think. Are you working on that? Uh, yeah. Just so the rest of you know that um, back in 2016, I think it was um, when they were working on the wall, they did uncover some coffins that had some remains in them. So. Um, in we've, North, right? At, uh, yeah, North Cemetery. Um, so we've been working on a um, a group or a committee, and we're going to get together the minister from North Church, because it's the North Cemetery, she's on board, the archaeologist who has had care of the remains and did all kinds of research, and they've been properly and safely um, held uh, these last six years. Um, and then um, we'll probably, Corin and Max, we went to the cemetery with the archaeologists and we did find three of the original tubes. When they discovered the remains, um, they, um, they placed three tubes in a row closest to where the coffins are or were found. And um, 
that's the way they'll be put back down in into the cemetery. Then they'll be sealed up, and we're going to put a um, granite um, piece of granite it flat in the ground that will have some sort of description, a memorial and a description of, how, you know, the city has returned them to their proper burial place. Um, Do we know who they are? No. She's done all kinds of research, and there's no clue as to who they are. If someone could just find those really old church records, it would be great, but they still haven't turned up any place. So. But you never know. I mean... So I just thought you and I should meet out there. We'll yeah. Try to figure out what size and yeah. what you exactly want for stone. And okay. We so can why don't we just plan on doing that probably okay. next week? Yep. Okay. Give me a call. So anyway, that just that's now in progress. It's not a secret that this has happened. It's going to be we're going to invite the mayor and what have you. And um, so it's still in that organizing point. So if you should get any questions, which I wouldn't think you would, D and I used to get questions because some other people knew about about it when because they were around when it happened. But again, it's going to be a little ceremony. They're going to go back in and um, it will be publicized. So, is there a proposed date yet? No, I'm waiting to hear back from the archaeologist and Suzanne <coughs> late September, okay. and it will probably be like at. Uh, late morning type of thing because the it's right on the wall right <clears throat> on the road so we'd wait until traffic and you know so it wasn't quite congested and all of that so so uh, next week give me a yeah text. let's look it together and yep. do that uh, so the other thing on the list was the just Hall Cemetery you know I think y'all know that the trees were approved yeah, um, for uh, removal. Uh, these people haven't been out in a while. Um, Cynthia, that's one of the the first eight pictures. This is what Hall Cemetery looks like as of a month ago. So that that's coming from South Street going down. Yeah, next one. All these. That's the walkway. What you're looking at would be the walkway or the right of way down into there. Yep, yeah, next is good. That's the entrance to the cemetery itself. It's been cleared a little bit around there. Um, this is inside the cemetery. Is that on the upper part? No, nope, lower part. Lower this part. is the inside of the cemetery. That's the inside of the cemetery. That's the inside. That's the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's the inside. And I think I thought I had saved the picture that has the headstones, what you can. That's where they're talking about. That's the back side. That's Bracket Road. And um, we're in the process of the legal department will have to send out notifications to the abutters that things are going to happen. But we also have to contact one of the neighbors to, to get permission. That's his land to come up through there because the contractor, well, all three contractors, the contractors all said it would be much easier, obviously, because you saw what the right-of-way was like. Um, and I'm sure it's even more full at this point in time with all this rain. So and I think there's one more picture. Yes, uh -huh. and that's all that you can see. And there's over 40 headstones in that cemetery. And most of them are revolutionary. It's a great, it's a cool spot. It is so yeah. cool. So cool. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. beautiful. So is so. that just waiting on the uh, right away uh, paperwork, basically, to get permission? Right. I, I, yes. I, I met with Suzanne last week, and um, that will just wait there, uh, please. Um, the, um, the next step will be the trees and greenery approved us taking down all those trees. It's like over 25 trees, um, but it's all been approved. So the next, Suzanne knows that. So she turns it over to Peter Rice, and then Peter Rice will turn it over probably to Max. We're not sure because they've redesigned a little bit, but it will go to, um, 
to someone to oversee it from the DPW. And then uh, I'm assuming um, it will probably be Knowles Tree because they said they would give us the most work for the $15,000 that was approved by the city. So, um, and that would include cleaning out the cemetery and cleaning out that whole path. So, uh, again, the commitment would be made between Knowles and the city and then get permission from the abutting neighbor to use his land and then notify the abutting. So I'm thinking, and you can correct me, Corinne, if it goes through, um, it could be done this fall sometime in September, October. Yeah, as long as all the paperwork, as long as the right of way permission is in place and the, the money is... Yeah, the money's already been yeah, allocated. Yeah, I, I would think we'd, it could be done this fall as long as we have all the paperwork we need. We're right, yeah. if it goes smoothly. It's just a matter of giving Knowles the thumbs up. <laughs> them in there. And it goes smoothly. So. It'll go smoothly. It'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Uh, so that, um, that's really exciting at, at this point to get that done. So, um, okay, so that's, that's so you, everyone saw what, Okay, go ahead, next. Okay, <laughs> so uh, the next is, is just the, the signs for the dawn to dusk. I think everybody saw them. We got approved. We got the uh, blessing from the city manager. It's on my plate to get them made, put them out. This is a really hard time of year. Our signs department, they oversee all of the painting of all the lines in town. They oh, come in I at 4 a.m., they leave at noon. I never see them. Just to be totally honest, it's probably going to be this fall, early fall. I'm right now looking for the sign stands that are sort of at an angle, like the, uh, the sort of historic informational signs. I think we might want to mount them like that. So I just need to get a price on those. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's likely going to be September before we see those out. But we're ready to go. I just have to make it happen. There's a couple things to coordinate. So it's on my list. Um, and we might even... Um, when Corin and I were talking, maybe um, we might want to go down and walk around real quick to decide. Yeah, we're going to want to cite them. So Cite them where we'd want them to go and things like that. I will say I was down there, down there last week checking on headstones, and there were three or four freshly dropped presents. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, they, and they are along that established walkway, but... I mean, two of them were up right near a headstone, so, but they still weren't picked up. And, you know, people are down through there with dogs every single day, so. All right, so anything else? That uh, just some, you know, project updates. Uh, Max, oh. the, the tree crew got over and did clear the path on the back of North Cemetery. On the fence, they cut that back, so that's more accessible now because all that, that brush had kind of fallen off over the fence. Um, we talked about cleaning that granite, what we could possibly use to get that tar off the face of the granite down at um, Sagamore or South, oh, South, South, Street. South Street. Yeah, it's, uh, hang on a second. It's, uh, synth, not, yep. well, 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 I'll do backwards with you. This is Cotton Cemetery, and see all the brown grass and everything up in through there? Well, it was like Mud City when we were cleaning on those four weekends. So. Corn and I walked the site, and um, he determined, because I never saw a bird there, but when we came up over the hill, there were, what, three or four crows or whatever, that it has a grub infestation there, because I was going to ask just to have it replanted in the spring, but he, you know, being it's the expert. Grubs. I mean, it's yeah. sandy, not nutri the nutrients in there are very minimal. It's very common to see that. Yeah, so he he has a company that the city uses. So this fall, um, will you contact that person or find yeah, out what the best quote. time? Yeah, yeah, we'll start quote, getting a quote and go ahead and try to get that done. So Cynthia, if I could have the next, oh, and one more, I think. No, one more. Shoot, nope, never mind. I thought I had a picture of the front of South Cemetery that. He, that's what Corn's talking about. When you walk past South Cemetery, the, that whole front area, there's lots of tar dripping down. 
and go ahead, Corn. Sorry. Oh no, you're fine. Uh -huh. um, the other thing uh, is, so she confirmed that the permitting for the phase two work uh, for the stabilization plan at the North Cemetery Wall. I think you've talked with her about it. Is yeah. going to be handled through the outfall project that Dave Defosis is working on, and he's going to shepherd that through. Um, she said that you might want to explain that to the committee. Right. We could probably do that after, but she just wanted to yeah. me to mention that. Uh, and then, so the straightening of the headstones, um, we've got the okay from DHR, but yeah. she wants to formalize that a bit more. So she's going to be working on a, some language before you, you can go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so she said, I want to write a formal protocol for this small group of trained volunteers and let the city council know that the steps that need to happen before they start digging. Um, she's going to try to get to that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and corn is offered yeah. once we get the approval for that, uh, depending on what cemetery we start in, he will bring in a load of, um, uh, Whatever stone, we stone need, dust stone or, dust yeah. and, yeah, we can get and get dirt or whatever it is that we need. So we'll have it on site, and, and it won't have to be just on Saturdays. Um, um, so and all we'll need is wheelbarrows and shovels to help with it. So I think that's it. Other than you're very kind, you're always saying nice things about <laughs> DPW staff, but. <laughs> We really enjoy working with you, so I just wanted you to know that for the record. Oh, thank you. Every time I ask who wants to work headstone cleaning, there's no lack of enthusiasm. Oh, really? <laughs> good. Um, that's kind of becoming part of our our routine, our routine and it's really good. And, and uh, really enjoy working with you too. So I just want to thank say you. that publicly. Thank um, you. Yeah, uh, that's all I have, really. And I think you folks have some other things to talk about as far as signs yeah. and things like that. So that's all I have. Okay, so Thank you. we'll we'll let you go home and see your family. I appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get some sleep. Yeah. Um, great. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So it's always nice to see everybody. I wasn't yeah, I wasn't sure I'd see we see you because of what your schedule Jimmy had said. Oh well he'll be up until such and such. He yeah. will <laughs> Really I'm just taking advantage of the AC. So. <laughs> so I hear. We all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks yes. everyone. Thanks, Corn. Thank Great you. Night. Thank you. So. Um, did we do the. All right, we'll just start at the top and I'll fill in anything that. Uh, report on how to clean up the blue history signs. Yeah, uh, Cynthia, can you go back, back one? one. Yep. Or another one? one more. <laughs> right there, yeah. Yeah. It's just so everybody knows what we're talking <laughs> about, which are located not only in cemeteries, but as you know, all over town. 40 all over town, I think. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I tried to get in touch with the company and did not get a call back. Um, it, they've been purchased. The original company's name was Folia in near Quebec City in Canada, and um, they were purchased by somebody else. So I'm, I'm thinking that's why they're not calling me back. And I tried emailing them as well and didn't get a response. So I did a little research online and um, they say to like start with like bleach, even Windex. Um, and then if it's really uh, in bad shape, they recommend like the goo. The I should have be gone. down the names and you know, stuff to- Yeah, the goo will be gone. Tar. And yeah, yeah that, kind, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go play with it. And okay. Which one do you think is in the worst shape? That's pleasant. Uh, I think the one at North is, is pretty, it, is pretty yeah. bad. So that's, yeah. what, that's what I'll do. And maybe I'll play with it this Saturday while the water's there. Oh, yeah. You know, so. Yeah. You um, want to bring your little arsenal up. Yeah. And I, and I said in my messages that I left with them is that, you know, if we don't, if we aren't able to clean them up or we want to look about, you know, replacing them and purchasing them. I thought that would get their attention, but um, no, it, it hasn't. So oh, no. I don't know. What was the date of that invoice? Do you remember? 2006, I think. So it has been 
what, so we're almost going on 20 years. Yeah, and that was a quote. Yeah. I think I, I'm still going to try again and even yeah. give them, you know, the invoice number um, of that quote. So I don't even know if we acted on that that quote. Well, yeah, I don't know either, yeah. but I, I, from what little history I know, we started out, the city started out doing it in groups of either five or ten, right? whatever they could afford at the time. So, you know, some of them, even if they did it 2007, they're still going on, they're 15 plus years old. So. Right. I think a, the majority of them were like 2013, 2014 oh, cool. ins installed then, but oh, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't get in touch with them, but That's all <laughs> I right. think, you know, just going with what, it was a different sign company that um, had an online presence with the how to clean, but I'm yeah. sure it's going to work the same, so. Yeah. So I'm just going to play with it. Oh, good. That's fine. And then we'll go to Eva for about signs for our, our historic cemeteries. Um, I, I don't think I shared it. We have... Um, Hall Cemetery, um, Hall Cemetery, Point of Graves, and Pleasant Street are already on um, the National Register, and it came in under Portsmouth Historic District um, zone. Well, that Hall Cemetery is already yeah. the one that is covered with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, you know, downloaded the maps and all that sort of stuff, but essentially this is a historic district and it, it includes all the areas that our cemeteries are in. So I went to the National Register and sure enough, we're under it. Now, whether we're under, I contacted the state and they weren't sure either. I'm learning that there are a number of registers for the on the national from the national park. That's who you apply to and everything. And there's more than one register. Is the impression that I'm getting. But regardless, it is listed on the register. It is the Portsmouth um, history downtown historical district which is also listed on the register and our sites have their own numbers so we are on the register so however that doesn't get us anything to speak of so it's it's helpful when we apply for other grants to let people know that we're we are we've been researched and and this goes for all the homes in the area. That's why you see a lot of the homes now have created 1755 or 1840. They're listed on this um, registry. So they, the government doesn't do anything for signing or helping you or anything. So you can just go ahead and sign your properties the way you want to sign them. So um, I spoke to uh, Eva and Dee one day. We got together and talked about the signs and everything. So she was going to research and see what kind of signs are out there and how much they would cost and things like that. And, you know, so we can plan for it or even maybe, you know, go for it now if we have the money. So. Uh -huh. I, I do on my notes, but Dee, I wanted to ask you, when you call, you call a company, are, are they listed on the sign or? Um, well, we have that invoice. Yep. Oh, okay. From All right, and that, it had a number at the bottom. Okay, okay. But it, they, I, don't, they don't answer the phone as yeah. folia anymore. But, I'm totally, I, I, I'm totally in sympathy. <laughs> um, um, and, and also, the, it's not on the signs. I've yeah, checked. Yeah. Down at the bottom, there's nothing about. Well, I, I might be able to in, in, illuminate that a, a, a bit. So, yeah. um, uh, I spent a lot of time online trying to find out um, 
all I could about historical signage, and I was trying to keep it local. Uh, and there are a lot of companies like Dan the Sign Man and, you know, mm. places all over. And I'll tell you, go on their sites, and they tell you very specifically, residential or business, finding, finding companies that do historical signage is a whole different ballgame. Wow. So I looked and I looked and I looked, and I finally found two in Ohio. And one day I just got a, a, a burst of inspiration, or whatever you want to call it, and I called the state. And, and I said, what do you use? Who do you use for signage? And lo and behold, it was one of the companies in Ohio that I had found. And, and I talked with them, and they said, you know, we have the same thing. You know, there are only so many companies. And this, these two companies, and let's, let's, I'll focus on the one the state uses. This is called CEWAH, S-E-E-W-A-H. They do have a website, and if you go on their website, you can see all the metallic signs. They, they have the National Registry signs is obviously one of their clients. So that was the, that was the main place that I, could find and um, and they are you know they are the ones that I emailed and they are also very slow to act but I do have some information um, about them. Um, um, they use metal photo, which is anodized an anodized aluminum process. Um, they have um, a, a lot of um, options. They can they can include. Um, uh, po poles, the right. poles and, and all of that stuff. But one of the things that I learned is that um, in this company and the other one I'm going to talk about, they want high resolution JPEG files. Now that's like beyond my purview. Please find somebody else who can do that. But they, they want that um, and um, they, you know, they tell you send, you know, send in our plans. We can design it for you, or you can send us the high-resolution JPEG file, and we will work with you over the phone or by email or text, whatever you like. So, so that was that. Um, they will do um, they will do graphics, pictures, text. You can order the posts. Um, they have a Facebook page if you want to look at them. So they are the ones that do the metal signs. If you go on their site, you will see examples of the National Historic Registry signs, the state ones. They obviously have cornered the market on this. And so I couldn't see reinventing the wheel. So quite frankly, when I found them and started communicating with them, I just stopped looking. Well, I, I looked and looked, but I, they were the only ones I could find. And then the state of New Hampshire corroborated that they used them. So then, then I looked into the blue signs, and I asked the city of Portsmouth, and they use, uh, this was kind of interesting, they use a company called Fossil on Long Island, and they have graphic panels that are, they're either high pressure laminate, or they're an aluminum composite, or they're acrylic. They can make signs, whereas um, the, the CWA doesn't make a signs as big. This company can make signs like that that are as big as five by 12 feet. Uh, and they can do double-sided. Again, they want high resolution files. Um, but also, I discovered that our fair city, um, if, if we had something in mind, they, you know, you know, we have a graphics department and they will design it they'll arrange for the production and they'll also arrange for the installation. I guess I should have asked Corn about that. Not that that would be him, but... but no, but the gentleman but, that does it is under him. So. Okay, so we have that possibility. Um, so there, apparently, so there are two different mediums. There's the metal photo and there's this acrylic stuff. And so, you know, right now it just depends on where we we want to go, and cost is really dependent on how much graphic, how much, you know, how much lasering they have to do and, and so forth. So they weren't very forthcoming about 
cost. They wanted to know what the plan Why was. Why don't we send them the picture of the ones that we want to replace and have them we, quoted? We could do that. And I, I actually thought about sending all of you pictures from their sites, and I thought, well, why? We know we know what they look like. So yeah, that might a be picture. a good idea. Just take a picture of one, the ones you want to replace and say, okay, price this for me. And there may even be pictures already on the city site because there's a there's a page that has links to all four yes. of yeah. the blue. Any other historical pictures you can get high resolution from the source. Uh, if you're looking at the New Hampshire archives, you can pay for regular resolution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the high resolution, right. which is what you would right. use if you do specialty printing. The, um, Could, sorry, can uh, we ask the FNAM for pictures? Oh, sure. I, I, we're not that far along at this point. I, I I would think that our first step would be to see if we can clean them, uh, ours, okay. for sure, okay. if we can clean them, and then if so, they really don't come out. So it's mostly mold, right? Uh, it yeah, mold? it's mostly. So on the fossil site, were, there was, a, there was a, a link to cleaning, cleaning their things. If if, if yeah. we got them fossil, and I'm assuming no, we, we did. Didn't. We no. didn't. Okay. No. But they are the they are the acrylic composite, aren't they? Uh, yes. So They're highly I, toxic, <laughs> uh, laminated yeah. type process. Yeah. That <clears throat> I do want to say that Siwa in Ohio really had the potential to be very very helpful. They're, they're definitely not a fly-by-night op operation. They have their own graphic designers, and you know they're a big deal. They are a big deal, and they they do only historical signage. They're, and that's, as I said, I found that in looking, you either do residential, commercial, or historical. You know, the twain does not meet. They're just too specific. How do you spell the name again? S e e w a h and they're in Marietta, Ohio. And they have a Facebook page. So, so, so anyhow, if you want to give me further direction about well, what I was going to say, to do, say um, is I'm going to meet with Corin next week about, you know, um, the headstone. So why don't I ask him them? Because okay. like he said, this gentleman is comes in like three or four o'clock in the morning and yeah. leaves early. Okay. And I, once he's in the middle of a project, you know, doing something sure. physically, he. So at, let me ask Corn right. if, and if that's let me true. Know if you want me, what you want yeah. me to pursue? Yeah. And then after that. After that. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Because uh, I knew that we had all of that, but I, I don't know if it's unlimited. And I'll also, to everybody, because. I think we're one of the few committees that request things, um, you know, like the planning board and other committees aren't going to be asking, you know, come cut the shrubs or can you make a sign for us or what have you. So we may be sort of like in a learning curve with this too. So let me ask her, uh, Corin, talk to him and um, to Suzanne too. How about, I was just going to make a suggestion. Yeah. Um, we try to clean, let's just take one of them, and we, we try to clean them first, mm -hmm. see if that brings back a lot of, you know, the vibrancy of that was original. Right. And then maybe there's a company that would give us a coating that we can put in there to preserve it. Because the history that is in there hasn't changed. You know, oh, it's yeah, still yeah. good. So if we can just find a way of getting a coating that, you know, it's a newer kind of thing that we'll be able to preserve it, it's cleaner, and you know, we may be able to get another 20, 30 years from it. Right. So the fossil who makes those kinds of signs guarantees them for 10 years. And uh, they do have a, uh, you know, a coating that they, they put on it. So you may find that there is a is a coating of, of some kind already mm -hmm. on it. But again, if it's not the same company, yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. 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 But, well, but they do they do say that they have it. Yeah, that's why I say just pick one 
and let's just work, you know, a smaller one, like this one is pretty small, and let's try to restore it ourselves, and maybe there's a coating that this new company can offer to protect it from, you know, from the weather, right. and see what it looks like afterwards. Then we don't have to do, do anything. And also, the signs may look like, but they definitely look alike, but they definitely had three different materials and processes, and one was more expensive than the next. Oh, and, okay. Gotcha. You know, and the expensive one was guaranteed for 10 years, but with the other two things, they didn't say how long they were guaranteed. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just well, AG business people. So I think we're, we're going to do north yeah. this Saturday. Dee's Saturday. going to bring yeah. down the materials because there'll be accessible yeah. water for you. You won't have to be lugging it from home. And then we can just see where yep. it goes. So, okay. So I'll talk to Corin. We're going to try cleaning on Saturday and then we'll regroup and see what it turns out to be. Yeah, because even if the city made it, I don't know, um, going back to the other signs, if we wouldn't be charged from, I don't know. So we have to find out about that. So, um, next one, we already talked about. Um, Oh, the wrought iron on, um, so yeah, the wrought, <laughs> this is the one from um, Point of Grace. Did I, if you go back one more, is that the front? No. Can Peter see these signs or? No, he no, can't, um, sorry. Sorry, Peter. He's on Zoom. That's okay. He should be able to I can to imagine them. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, all right, and then the other way, I thought I put a, I don't know what, no, uh, I guess that's it. You can, yeah, you can take them. For sure. Yeah. Oh, there it is right there. Um, that grouping, that entrance to Point of Graves, which is theoretically the oldest cemetery in the country um, because of the 1629 burials that took place there, um, that, that, uh, uh, wrought iron gate doesn't go back to that, that that date, but the gentleman who came from um, a company in Massachusetts, who's for 40 years they've been restoring historical wrought iron fences, and they've done a lot of the major cemeteries down in Boston, or you know projects at them, um, as well as privately. He came up. He gave me a really good understanding that that gate and the turnstile are old. They aren't there. I could have told you that. <laughs> Not as he pointed out things. At first, he wasn't sure. Like that, that goes back, that's probably 100 years old. Well, how do you know that, they, that it was back then? Because of the way that it's designed. Oh, anyway. So uh, that is, a time, is the, the era that he said that, that that belongs. Too. He said maybe 150 years, maybe a little bit more than that. But there, um, he wasn't sure at first until we really started looking at it. So he thought it was newer than that, maybe 75 years old or something like that. But anyway, um, he had never seen a turnstile before in all his work that he's done. So that's original to hear. Um, I mean, for us anyway, uh, on the East Coast, who knows, at other places. Um, he suggested not to straighten up the two, the granite posts that are sort of caving, you know, mm -hmm. leaning a little bit. Um, he said if you, it's going to cost a lot of money to do that anyway, but it also would take away the um, significance of looking older or, you know, being older if we straighten it. So that would keep it more authentic. Um, so they would come in, take everything down, take it back to Newburyport. Um, then they would sandblast it. There are some replaced pieces um, in there, which he showed me. So they would uh, uh, fabricate uh, a few pieces to, uh, you know, to match the whole the whole fence. Um, he didn't notice anything on the uh, turnstile. And then they would, there were three or four different layers that they would put on it. So, and it would come to, 
and this isn't a fast company, it would come to over $10,000 to do that. But that would be taking it out, putting it back, you know, replacing it and everything. Um, and it would probably last another 150 years as far as the rusting and what have you. So that's out there um, for us to consider if we want to fundraise for that or, you know, write a grant going forward. Then the next one is, um, too many papers here. Um, oh, update on, he, he did the signs for us, um, the moose plate. We all know where the cemetery wall is, the sea wall that's going to be done. There is some movement on that, and it's in the middle of being permitted. There's like four different organizations that have to permit it, but it is moving forward. Cynthia, can we? Is that the one on the North Pond, or? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, North I'm, Mill Pond. I'm done with that. If, if we close that, then Peter can see us, or we can see Peter, right? I'm trying to be conscious of. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I know um, right where you're talking when you're talking about these places. The what? I know what you're talking about when you mention these okay, locations. Okay, well, I want to be able to see you to remind me that you're okay. here. Um, so, yeah, it's in North Mill Pond, the very beginning. Can we help you, or did you have, sir? Can we can we help you? I, we can, I can move you up. It's John Shaggy. John, I didn't... <laughs> I, 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 saw did you not, you, I saw you had database on the agenda. Um, and I don't know if you've got to it yet or not. No. But, uh, you know, just keep me in the loop. So we oh, I will. Yes. We. It's going to ramp back up again. It came to a halt, but now it's going to ramp back up. Getting the software and everything? Yeah. Yeah. And then on another level, uh, I got in touch with that woman that you sent. Money. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Um, I wonder he looked familiar. <laughs> yeah. I, could, I didn't place him without his hat on. Um, let's see. Uh, report dust on. Oh, so this part of the wall, it's in the middle of being permitted, and there are between the city, the state, and the Army Corps, and what have you, they all have to permit it. But it's in the process of having that done. And then I don't know when it will be done, but again, this kind of work can be done up until there's too much snow on the ground to get equipment down in the back or because they work in in the water all the time. So, um, but the second half where the stone wall stops and then it goes all around right behind North Cemetery. Well, right in that area on the other side, um, you know, here's here we are the cemetery and then there's the water and then over there. Well, all that construction they're doing downtown with the sewer. That's all going to all end up coming back through there. It's going to go under the tracks and it's going to be dumped out into North Cemetery. So the other side is going to be dealt with. So the city engineers and Peter Rice and everything um, decided that that scope will be put into that project. So that money won't come out of the cemetery. Um, funds and it will take care of it so if by the time they get to it if the state's still working on the premise that they would just want us to um, plant it with native plants to stop the erosion then that's what they'll do but if this uh, city uh, not the city but the state they want us to do more than that then it will be part of their project but so it's on the list as a capital improvement as part of that project. Just like Point That's of great. Graves is still on the list for that sewer project down there to find out how we can fix the wall down on that end where it slopes down. So that's updated. Um, restoration of Cotton Cemetery. Showed you the pictures of the, uh, the grubs. The front of the cemetery, um, Corin's team will steam clean that because it's real, I, I went over and did D2. I mean, it's dirty, it's really dirty. So um, 
that will be steamed cleaned and then there is some tar coming down at some section so they want to figure out how to take that off um, also um, he has some really nice black chain the kind that's covered in the heavy plastic so he's going to measure what he has left and so in the gateway he'll put that there because it really it will really stand out and then we're going to do or, or potentially do that top piece of grant, granite that goes across we can have cotton cemetery sandblasted in there so going forward when people ask where cotton cemetery is it's it's going to be right there um, because on the end proprietors has been sandblasted into that end so would all be a part of that same long wall and it would bring that up to date That's nice and then um, I got prices on replacing the doors that you, here you can pass this around uh, um, the doors oh yeah the doors because that one door has been replaced um, yeah. and the back of the cemetery looks so great the, it just makes the front of the cemetery look so awful um, that uh, yeah I got I don't I think it came to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and that would get all the doors replaced the the two wooden doors that are there that were just a you know a that's fix pretty, that's pretty good yeah and um, so it replaced the double wooden doors and there's another wooden one on one of the small tombs and then the other two tomb doors are really rusted so he's going to clean those and they'll all be painted the same color so when it's finished you're going to look at it you're going to see all the same doors freshly done but the period because they're the actual doors most of them then cotton cemetery and on clean on clean granite so it will really make the cemetery stand out pop so and again there are a lot of revolutionary people buried up in there so um, not that regular people don't deserve it either but <laughs> but if we're premising this all on historic right they're buried there yeah. list altars and all kinds of people so could I have that picture so I can send it to them? Um, so that's on the agenda I have to give that price to um, well I should I guess I should say if um, well I'm not gonna we don't need to vote on any money or anything right now so I guess do we have to vote on um, that we look into the project or you know continue on with the project and see where it gets us or just wait until we get all the not unless you're ready to make a motion to move to actually do the work right yeah and we're, we're not we're there still yet. in the investigatory stage so. yeah so okay I just wanted to make sure I wasn't breaking any <laughs> rules did you get to see it Duncan yes I did yeah. okay um so update restoration so cemetery and then you heard Corin uh, relay that Suzanne's hasn't been able to um, uh, send to the state I gave her my copy that the state said that you know use John um, I'm gonna say Langdon so John <laughs> John Lord um, as our instructor and um, but there's been a lot of stuff going on up in legal and she had to take some time off so um, again this kind of work can go on right through October actually it'll be better because it'll be less heat and humidity and to maybe deal less with. rain <laughs> yeah exactly there are a few people that are interested in doing it so that's really good um, and corn wants to teach or have a couple of his guys learn how to do it too so that going forward if something does get knocked over or whatever the city will be able to do it on their own you know as, as it goes forward oh also um, it's not on the agenda but 
the fence down at North Cemetery, and it goes behind. Um, Corin was talking about actually, <laughs> there was uh, the back fence. The trees had grown, or shrubs, because of all the rain, had grown had grown way over the fence and had actually made an eight foot and about six foot wide cave. And people had been staying in there. You could see. Uh, oh, and that was dear. all from the rain. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because it was just a shrub. And it was just like, and you could stand up in it just about. I mean, and so it was way over, covered the path. And so people were starting to walk over headstones. So is that the chain link fence in the back? Yeah, right over the just... chain link fence. So um, Max went down there, our arborist, um, this past week cut that all out and went down along the whole back fence and cut down anything that he could legally cut down, um, you know, as long as it wasn't in the, on the buffer to the, to the water down below. So um, that's cleaned up. And I haven't seen any more beer cans down there, and I don't know of anyone that's been, um, you know, the city hasn't been cleaning anything. So. Um, because I really thought when I saw this little cave, uh, Max called it a hobbit hut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I would go inside and see beer cans and food wrappers and stuff like that, but there was none of that. So I don't know if the rain has been keeping people That's true. out of the cemetery or not. Oh. But to get back to the fence, um, the city and Sean Mahoney, who is the abutter? The abutter right behind us and the uh, railroad company have been in talks because that road that runs beside us, yeah. um, that's all a part of a big development going forward and that's eventually wants to be a greenway. And I, I tell you, every time I go, it doesn't matter whether it's misting or sunny out, there are people walking that coming in off mm -hmm. of... Um, Maplewood. Maplewood, going down through the walk along the water and out the other side and down the railroad tracks. <laughs> it's already a well-established wow. walking route. Yeah. Well, and I see people coming from both ways all the time. So even that Saturday, it was raining out. There were people walking their dogs down through there. So um, anyway, they do want to get rid of the fence. So they're trying to come to, I mean, the city, Corrin and you know, wants to get rid of the fence too because there are two really big dead trees on the other side and we don't want to cut them down yet, but if they fall this way, they're going to take out headstones. There's no question about it. And, um, well, if that's going to happen, why don't they, why don't they want to take down the trees if they're dead anyway? Because there's, uh, the, um, boundaries haven't been determined. There's been a big boundary issue the last five years, so it may not be the city's to take down. May not it may not be ours to take down. So um, they're working with the railroad whose property we abut on the dirt road. So um, she <laughs> thinks they're going to be able to come to an agreement that they'll all agree to what a, a boundary is, an informal boundary for exactly the kind of work that we're talking about. And other things, too, because the um, railroad's going to be doing things. So um, so hopefully that takes place, because once that happens, again, that fence can come out and anytime. Replace it, that replace it with, with what? Anything? Uh, we're just taking one step at a time. Just want to get it out of there, be able to have access to the growth that's on that side. There are other trees that aren't dead now that could possibly be gone in the next year or two. So, um, but first things first, let's get the fence out of there. It's rusted and old and looks like hell. So let's just, I mean, that's the biggest stumbling block right now. There's no, there won't be any stumbling block to whatever that we decide, you know, you know, everybody agrees on to replace it. It's getting it out. We actually had a person back way back when that wanted to pay to have it taken out, but because there was no determined boundary, it didn't happen. So, so how long has that been an issue? I mean, is this going to be like McIntyre and go on forever? Or? 
the bound, you know, the the trees and the boundary. Is this something that has uh, evolved over the last year or two, or is it a long standing? I I think I don't. You don't know either. Yeah. Know, yeah. My impression is it's um, happened when the, I think they're calling it the Greenway Project. Um, it, the design was made a long time ago. When I say a long time ago, once they started putting up all the hotels and mm -hmm. all those buildings, part of the design was to have a, a walkway from mm -hmm. um, Market Street that you could, you know, walk along Market, right. Market Street, right. hop on to this green pathway, cross Maplewood, go down through there, and then go down right to um, uh, Bartlett Street. Is this the part of that 105 Bartlett Street project? The what, which part? The 105 Bartlett Street project. That I don't know. I, I never paid attention to the name of the project when Nick Cracknell showed me the diagrams and everything last year. I think that's... Uh, and the city was interested in trying to get Mahoney's property because it would be a perfect place to put an additional park or something there rather than have him sell it and put more condos up there. So, Which is Mahoney's property? Is this the same... Where the this is where the salt pile used to be, right behind the oh, cemetery. No, no. Okay. I'm yep. thinking of something different then. He owns the salt pile, Granite State, down where the salt pile is. Did he want to run for Congress years ago? He or did. Something like that. He did. It was his father, wasn't it? No, he did. He did? Anyway, so that, so it's been going on for a while. Okay. How long, I don't know, but that's when all of the, um, Boundaries, because there's a question about the boundary, even against the the waterfront, um, and I'm not sure what that's all about. Because we were hoping to get a survey done of the property, so we could at least take that down in conjunction with another project, but that didn't happen. So it, it's not like going to Lowe's and buying a fence <laughs> and putting a new one up. Not by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, but that's where that stands right now. So, um, if nothing else, we've established that we're included with a lot of projects here in, in town, which is great, because people haven't thought about the cemeteries in a long time. So, nobody's fault, just that's the way it is. I happen to come across a piece of paper today from 19, I mean, 1887, and it was big article in whatever the paper was called then about how awful our cemeteries were and how um, how disgraceful it was that our citizens didn't take care of them. So, and it was specifically about the North Cemetery at that point. So, we're just another part of the link to preserve it, which is fine. So, um, that's the latest on that training the training oh and the database and the map for the website all right that all slowed down and back in january um there were um i think it has sort of been reorganizing slowly since january they brought on new staff um things are changing around so our cemetery project sort of got put on the back, not sort of, it did. It got put on the back burner, which um, uh, Katie from the library and I um, didn't want to try to push and get things going during the middle of the winter because they were right in the middle of, you know, making things better for everybody in IT. So they sort of hit a point at this time when I talked to Suzanne, that things are really under control, and she's going to talk to IT and see, because our database was almost completely done, as far as creating the database was almost. Um, and we have, we have to put the rest of um, North Cemetery. I got through the C, so from D to Z uh, still needs to be put into an Excel spreadsheet, and our historic cemeteries will be 
ready to put up online. And I, we need to find somebody that, that's why John was here, because he gave us the $1,500 to help pay for, his cemeteries are really, his really big. So to try to get someone to put um, all his, inf all their information in the database too, so. I mean, I volunteered before, but I'm so happy to do some data entry. Okay, well, I'll, so I'll, all you need is a spreadsheet and um, yeah, I can get in touch. I, I did quite a few of the cemeteries this winter, but I stopped. <laughs> I just plain stopped. That was it. <laughs> had other things to do um, besides that. Um, any questions or other? Since I knew what John was, I, I, and what John was referring to, I get maybe once a month. Uh, email from someone wanting to find out about a burial plot or getting headstones clean from all of the cemeteries about all of the cemeteries and um, this woman it happened to be proprietors so um, I let him know about the lady what I usually do is just either you know email them back give them the name of people they should get in contact with and help them that way which is why the map if it would go up, I could just say go to the map, hit, you know, Calvary Cemetery, and it's going to pop up and give you all that information. Contact so and so, so and so, and it will it will help people because I've had two or three people that have been extremely frustrated and because they don't get phone calls back even from other cemeteries. So um, another reason to get our our map and our database up online to help. And even I'm on archive committee and the, the archivist that came down said that was a good idea, that most communities were doing that and that archives up in Concord gets requests about genealogy and burial sites. So if we have our own site, it will help a lot of people, but also preserve the information, just another way to it will be around for hopefully another hundred years or whatever. Yeah. So, any other questions? And head cleaning, headstone cleaning this Saturday, North Cemetery. If you can come, eight to eight to noon, we'll be there. So How about uh, August fifth. That too. Union Union on. Yeah, we're we're down to just north and adjoining Union. And Union's going to be fun because that has lots of wrought iron covering. I mean, you know, you yeah. got to climb over up yeah. four or five uh, obliques and stuff like that. So it will get done. So maybe not all of it this year, but we're getting really close. So. And then we can dedicate our time to doing databases. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any questions? A second. All, those All in favor? favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Peter, for coming. So I don't think you met Duncan.